You're listening to Tim Bolkley's 5-Minute Bible Minority Report Kingship in Samuel This is the third part of a little series Previously in the series Twisted Tales where I pointed out that Judges is brutal, brutish and sadly not short but drew attention to its last line In those days Israel was not ruled by a king and everybody did what they thought was right I then looked at the lovely story of Hannah's desire for a child and in particular at Hannah's song of the coming Messiah and suggested that that song and that hope provided a reason for the nasty stories of judges but of course Hannah's hope for a coming Messiah is not the only approach to kingship in the books of Samuel the scheme as I've drawn it so far is far too neat as commentators have pointed out it's true that 1 Samuel opens as a peen to monarchy and there's quite a lot of that in the books of Samuel and Kings but even for this beginning of the book that's putting it too strongly I think the attitude of the book of Samuel or the books of Samuel to monarchy is more like Oscar Wilde's poem Libertatis Sacra Fames albeit nurtured in democracy and liking best that state republican where every man is kinglike and no man is crowned above his fellows yet I see spite of this modern fret for liberty better the rule of one whom all obey than to let clamorous demagogues betray our freedom with the kiss of anarchy wherefore I love them not whose hands profane plant the red flag upon the piled up street for no right cause beneath whose ignorant reign art culture reverence honor all things fade save treason and the dagger of her trade and murder with his silent bloody feet while was responding to brutal rebellions and perceiving that perhaps even autocracy is better than anarchy in one Samuel the majority view is that kings offer security justice stability it's all summed up in mishpat u sadaka justice and righteousness the king according to this majority view is God's gift for, for an oppressed people but you can also find a minority view for example in 1 Samuel chapter 8 Samuel said these will be the ways of the king who will reign over you he will take your sons and appoint them to his chariots to be his horsemen and to run before his chariots and he will appoint for himself commanders of thousands and commanders of fifties and some to plough his ground and to reap his harvest and to make his implements of war and the equipment of his chariots he will take your daughters to be perfumers and cooks and bakers he will take the best of your fields and vineyards and olive orchards and give them to his courtiers he will take one-tenth of your grain and of your vineyards and give it to his officers and his courtiers he will take your male and female slaves and the best of your cattle and donkeys and put them to his work he will take one-tenth of your flocks and you shall be his slaves this ivory from the Bronze Age from Megiddo suggests that Samuel's view was not entirely unrealistic in this ivory we can see a picture of a Canaanite king seated on his throne in majesty and a bunch of Semitic slaves being led before him as prisoners the minority report of course goes on and in that day you will cry out because of your king whom you have chosen for yourselves but the Lord will not answer you in that day and makes sure that the blame sticks to the people but the people refused to listen to the voice of Samuel they said no but we're determined to have a king over us so that we also may be like other nations and that our king may govern us and go out before us and fight our battles so on the subject of kingship already in Samuel there is both a majority report which focuses on Mishpat u Sadaka, justice and righteousness and a minority report this will be the way of the kings which focuses on the reality of life under a king and it's that mixture of hope and realism which as you read through the books of Samuel and on into Kings continues to resonate through the corpus it's neither as simple as kings are God's gift nor is it as simple as kings are horrible oppressors but rather like Oscar Wilde this time his sonnet to liberty it's both those things not that I love thy children whose dull eyes see nothing save their own unlovely woe whose minds know nothing nothing care to know but that the roar of thy democracies thy reigns of terror thy great anarchies mirror my wildest passions like the sea and give to my rage a brother liberty for this sake only do thy dissonant cries delight my discreet soul else might all kings by bloody knout or treacherous cannonades rob nations of their rights inviolate and I remain unmoved and yet and yet these Christs that die upon the barricades God knows it I am with them in some things and that ambiguity runs through scripture and regularly in scripture we get both 
majority and minority reports locally within scripture different views are expressed about kingship or human authority some positive some negative and that's true of the books of Samuel and Kings the Bible often has this mix of hope in particular hope of a coming Messiah or in the New Testament hope of the fulfilling of the rule of the Messiah who's come and realism the present king in Jerusalem or emperor in Rome so that gives a slightly fuller picture of the situation to complete my trilogy bye for now